Hey everyone, and welcome to DC Daily. Hector Navarro here, and I'm joined by Sam Humphreys and Whitney Moore. What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? Boy, you did that, it. You that, surprised another us. Another Silver Age reference, right? <laughs> Silver that Age old enough to be from the Silver Age. That's from the, the 50s, Silver right? Age of television commercials. Yes, yes. <laughs> the Silver Age of the Super Bowl. <laughs> we are so excited to be here because today we're talking Batman versus Superman. No, not the movie. The episode Battle of the Superheroes from Batman: The Brave and the Bold. This has some great action sequences of Batman and Superman working together, then fighting each other, then working together again. Can't these two just get along? Come on, what's going on? No. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not. We must not. see them fight. We have to see them fight. So what were your guys' overall thoughts on this episode? Whitney, let's start with you. This was such a funny episode. It was so much fun. And it is, to me, the best opening cold open that I have oh, seen so really? far on the show. Whitney, yes. would you classify that as an S-C-C-C-O? If that's what we're calling it, yes. If that's Stone Cold the- <laughs> Classic Cold Open? Yeah, yeah, it's that. Well, let's talk yeah, about yeah. it now. Let's save the meat of the episode for the meat of this recap, but let's talk about the cold open. It's Batman and Robin, which is kind of weird and rare for Batman the Brave and the Bold for him to be teaming up with Robin, the boy wonder, his sidekick. Uh, and they're fighting a character that they call the Pharaoh and his mummies. But if you're a fan of Batman 66, Sam, who's this guy? They call him the Pharaoh, but this is clearly King Tut Thank from you. the live action Batman TV show of the 60s. That's right. Uh, for various legal reasons, throughout comics and other movies and shows and TV, uh, they can't say it's King Tut. They can't say the, that it's that guy because that character was created for the TV show. Right. So it's a legal thicket into which none of us wish to wade. But it's essentially <laughs> the same character down to the fact that buttermilk is his weakness. That's also something they took from the TV show. Uh, the other cool thing I'd like to point out for this cold open, we have a Vicky Vale appearance, which is really yes, cool. Certainly See, do. Yes. Classic Batman mm-hmm. character and movie character, mm-hmm. Vicky Vale. And uh, uh, King Tut or Pharaoh is voiced by the man himself, John DiMaggio. And he does such a great comedic little voice that is hearkening back to that old 60s, you know, fan favorite show where like celebrities would come on, actors would come on and play these outrageous villain characters. And it's so great. Yeah. He's Once so again, funny. DiMaggio does it. DiMaggio does it. So let's just <laughs> does it. Let's just jump in. This is Batman and Superman. This is Superman's first full appearance in this series. So many characters of the Superman supporting worlds. First real major appearance in this show. And it opens with Jimmy Olsen trying to trick Superman into telling him his secret identity with this harebrained scheme that feels so like a Silver Age comic. Jimmy, it's not going to work, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. <laughs> I You've love... given it the old college try, it really but it's is, not really going to yeah. work. Not, I love that Superman not. just like humors him, though. It's mm-hmm. so funny <laughs> until the very, very end. He's like, oh, my people need me. Uh, by the way, uh, you're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. So good. By the way, dumbass, I got <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah, we get a great little montage after this where Superman and Batman are sort of teaming up and they're working together to fight crime in Metropolis. I love this. Kevin Michael Richardson voices Lex Luthor and he has such an amazing voice. Kevin Michael Richardson is mm-hmm. one of my favorite voice actors and what he brings to Lex Luthor. I mean, he's played the Joker. He played the Joker in the cartoon series, The Batman. And I thought he had a great take on Joker there, but he has this beautiful, deep, rich voice and his Lex Luthor is so silky smooth and so, so good. I love hearing him as Luther. It's fantastic. And we get to see him again later. It's not just a cameo. We get to see him come back, but we get Metallo, uh, El Garker, Mr. McZipsel Spitlick, and Batman says, and I thought Batmite was annoying, which is such a great <laughs> moment. Yeah. Did I mispronounce that, Sam? For, no, no, no. I was going to give you props for correctly pronouncing Mr. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Mixes Spitlick. That's exactly what I said. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have another cool moment where. Jimmy and Lois get presents from Superman. And then I want to talk to you about this, Sam, because they get these presents from Superman. They're containing bright red jewelry, which is really nice, but we're going to learn later that it's not so nice. Uh, But we also have like fun cutaway gags of their favorite memories with Superman. Uh, Yeah. This was hilarious. I, I immediately got super excited because there's this montage where Jimmy Olsen like like flips through in his mind all these different transformations he's had with yeah. his adventures as Superman. There's a brief moment where you see Jimmy marrying a gorilla, and I knew immediately where that came from because I have that comic <laughs> right here. Dude, it's from Superman's so pal <laughs> Jimmy Olsen, the bride of Jungle Jimmy. This is a, a classic cover because 
it, it, it's one of those covers where it appears Superman has no choice but to be uh, uh, a bad friend to Jimmy Olsen because mm-hmm. because Jimmy's like I, I don't want to I don't want to marry this gorilla and Superman's like sorry Jimmy uh, he, he, it's, it's got to happen I don't know what to tell you this is, <laughs> comic uh, books are weird you guys I, n- Superman, I know Superman was a right? real jerk on a lot of those he covers was a by real, the way oh yeah the yeah. Silver Age covers where he would say stuff to Lois and Jim, like he was a jerk which is why I mm-hmm. love the rest of this episode. That well, wait, stuff. There's, there's, there's more. There's more. Show there's, us more. This is issue ninety eight for mm-hmm. the record, nineteen sixty six. And then I have this, this treasure, this treasure of a trade paperback called "The Amazing Transformations of Jimmy Olsen," which collects some of the crazy adventures of Jimmy Olsen from the Silver Age. This is a beautiful recreation of them by Brian Bolland, none other. The guy who did the um. The cover art for Wonder Woman and the yeah. Killing Joke, but we see uh, this Jimmy Olsen in the episode, and the Spiky Jimmy Olsen, and the Bizarro Jimmy Olsen. They <laughs> dig deep on this show. They really remix the mythology, and I love it every every time they do it. That mm-hmm. cover is a delight. I love it. <laughs> Jimmy Olsen yes. says, "Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you." I needed thank to you. see that face thank one you. more Jimmy. time. Thank blink, you. buddy. You got to blink, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then we learn, of course that this red jewelry is not just regular red jewelry, it's red kryptonite, y'all. It's red kryptonite and it affects Superman and he starts being a jerk, <laughs> right? It does. We get this yeah. montage of Superman doing evil stuff and it's so petty and it is the opposite <laughs> of what we think of as Superman. He makes it rain on a sunny beach day. He puts a cat in a tree. He ties the Metropolis Bridge into a knot. He burns a hole in a custom Superman robe that Jimmy tries to give him. <laughs> like. It's, it's, so it's so funny. funny. The yeah. the autographs one was my favorite. This little boy, he's like, Superman. He's like, no autographs. And he burns two laser eyes through his <laughs> autograph pad. It's yeah. so funny. I love the, the Superman. These had me dying. My soul's leaving my body. And then the, the creators of the show, they crushed my heart because it went too far when he was a jerk to crypto, the super. Oh, guy. I know. Oh. I couldn't handle it. I could he, not go, nope, mm no way. He said, you cannot he be him, a jerk. He called him Cut a the bad cameras, dog. Cut dead ass. Yeah, he, yeah. he, he mm-hmm. called him How a bad dog, you? and then crypto came back in like from outer space and just like walloped him really, really yeah. good. Because- he, so he, sh- he shook up the city, <laughs> he declared himself king, and you draw the line at him being mean to crypto. Yes. Speaking I'm, of shaking okay. up the city, everything gotcha. okay back there, Hector? Yeah, you my gotta... action figures fall all the time. It's fine. All it's right. normal. You can leave it in the episode. It's fine. Superman <laughs> fell. See, Batman took him out. Superman's being a jerk. Oh, no. <laughs> See? Foreshadowing. That's what Foreshadowing. happened. Uh, no, you're right, Whitney. It's like even the moment where Superman's hanging out on a beach with a, a beautiful redhead who comic book fans know is Lana Lang because it's a, it's a mm-hmm. reference to a, like a classic Superman Silver Age moment. And he tells oh. Lois, this is what you get for always trying to get me to marry you with your schemes yeah. and then it cuts back to Lois and she goes I have no idea what he was talking about it was so funny <laughs> <laughs> Lois knew exactly what she was and then maybe my favorite moment of him being a jerk is when he holds up the bottle city of Candor and he goes oh, earthquake ah. mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's what all of that we can excuse now. but be mean to crypto you're yeah, done. No. You're done. You're done. You're canceled. Mm-hmm. You're done. Get out of here. Superman is canceled party. So even <laughs> though this is a love letter and an homage to classic Silver Age comics, we're still going to bring some 80s into it. We're still going to bring some early 2000s into it because then Superman has to take on Batman and Batman shows up in a mech suit that basically looks like the Dark Knight Returns armored suit that he wore. It's so great. And there's even moments where Sam, they're fighting. He's taking him out. He's punching him. And look at that. Wait, for one by one here. When uh, The second he showed up in that armor, I cheered because this yeah. is the same armor from Dark Knight Returns. Frank Miller, Klaus Janssen, 1986. This is 20 years after that Jimmy marrying the gorilla, yep. right? And then Hector, you, you eagle eye, found this next reference, didn't you? I did. I think I. I think I'm right. In this great montage of of cool camera, uh, you know, like sort of freeze frame shots where they're punching. One of them was, I believe, taken from the classic now Batman Hush storyline drawn by Jim Lee. You've got Batman punching Superman. Now in the comic, he was wearing a kryptonite ring and no armor, but look at that. That's the shot right there. Look at that right there. Yeah. This is Jeff Loeb, Jim Lee, Scott Williams, 2002, right? Mm-hmm. So so many years of Batman Superman. Man history so many different tones right like the goofy silver age the dark dark night returns and then the like the streamlined modern hush 
-hmm. But what I love about the show is that they can take these elements and they remix them so they feel consistent. They don't yeah. feel like different pieces of a puzzle. They all fit so well together. They, they Hector even... Calling, uh, Hush, a uh, classic comic book, hit me right in, yep. in the 30s. Hit me <laughs> in the old. Uh, my Botox melted off. We're old now. Uh, that's right. Whoa. We're old. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this cartoon show itself is, is veering into classic territory. It was an instant classic when it came out, but it's already. And the brilliant thing is it's remixing stuff from the Silver Age, from the Golden Age, from the 80s, from the 2000s. And somehow it even reached into the future years and years and years before the live action movie came out. Because in this episode, there's a moment where Batman confronts Superman. They flip it. And he goes, what would Ma Kent think of this? And super That's right. And Whitney, what did you think of that? Woo! Woo! Huh. I, woo! I thought that that was a spicy moment. I was like, <laughs> damn, dude. Like, and, I, and I love how it's also a comedy beat because it's like, these are superheroes they're like they are capable of so much and that's the constant thing that i always go back to with superman is like he could ruin the world if he yep. wants to and the fact that that's the thing that gets through to him is what would your mom think of this is mwah, mwah. but it doesn't even get through to him the red kryptonite still keeps him a jerk that's not what does that's it right. it eventually wears off and then Superman and Batman team up again. They go take on Lex Luthor, who was behind it all. And right when Lex Luthor shoots Batman with something that he thinks is just going to take out Batman because Batman's a regular human, and then he throws some kryptonite to Superman, thinking it's going to weaken him with this ring that he has, and then he takes it, puts it in a little box, and it's no big deal. And then it's revealed that Superman is actually Batman in disguise with a Superman mask over his Batman cowl, and Batman gets up and his his costume singe and there's a Superman S under there and he takes off the Batman mask and it's Superman. They swapped, y'all. They swapped. Yeah, this is, this so is we're, we're, we're going from the Silver Age to the Modern Age to the Current Age all the way back to the Silver Age yeah. with that one. That's a classic Silver Age plot, Batman and Superman dressing up as each other. Yeah. You uh, love to see it. We love to see it. Um, I'm not used to a, a, a thick Luther. I feel like I'm so used now to seeing like skinny Luther, and so I saw him and I was like, "Oh, I, that's mm -hmm. that's like quite a change to me." I was I was mm -hmm. not prepared. <laughs> I, I love a thick Luther. I love the idea too that like if you go back to Superman the animated series from 1996, Luther was a little bit thick. He was drawn in those first few seasons in that way. Then later, when that same Lex Luther shows up in Justice League and Justice League Unlimited, he's like really fit. And the idea yeah. is that, mm -hmm. that Lex Luthor is this well-fed, comfortable billionaire, but then when Superman shows up, and Superman's like the perfect man, Lex Luthor then becomes obsessed with fitness, and then he becomes ripped as well. Is that is, canon? I mean, it's an interpretation that a lot of creators have kind of taken and run with, which I love, because you get best of both yeah. worlds. You get that nice, kind of chonky Lex Luthor from the Silver Age that we're used to, this mad scientist, mm -hmm. this, this great guy with a great presence. And then later we can explore how it messes with him and his insecurity to have Superman who shows up with powers. It doesn't matter how buff Superman is. No human can lift what Superman can lift. So he still gets so insecure about it that he gets really fit. And, and then they start to draw him in Superman, the animated series and Justice League as like working out constantly until he shows up. I love up and that take. Yeah. So guys, that was so much fun. It was an emotional roller coaster this episode. Batman it and Superman. Was. Batman and Superman are the ultimate off and on again pair. Thank you so much, Whitney and Sam, for joining me. Thanks, guys. Thanks, old chum. Hector, you are welcome. Hmm, thank you so much. <laughs> we'll check back tomorrow when we talk about the final episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold, Might Fall. And <laughs> it's a good one. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye. Bye, y'all. Bye,